Nehru and his vision of a modern India driven by science and technology led to the setting up of premier institutes of technology across the country. The idea was to train engineers who would develop and run the newly independent country's industrial and scientific establishment. The first institute was established in 1951 at Kharagpur in West Bengal, followed a year later by another in Mumbai, and soon after, one in Chennai. A fourth institute was proposed in Kanpur in Uttar Pradesh. Kanpur was not the most suitable place for a technology institute of this kind. It was located away from any major metropolitan centre and lacked the kind of social or material infrastructure required to support an IIT. Equally hard was finding a suitable person to establish and run the place. The director's post was offered to Dr. P.K. Kelkar and everyone was relieved when he agreed. But those who were close to him knew it was a decision made in difficult circumstances. My father started that uh, Bombay IIT as a planning officer and then he was the deputy director of the institute. But appointment of the director, which was a political appointment, took place. He was disappointed that the Bombay IIT job was given to somebody for some reasons other than qualifications and especially somebody who was not in the academic world at all. He had the option, I think, of going either to Chennai, Madras, or to Kanpur, and he chose Kanpur. When I came to Kanpur to join as a director of the institute, almost everybody I met asked me if I wanted to commit professional suicide. I did not at all worry about this, because I was no longer myself but an instrument of a historical process. In 1959, IIT Kanpur commenced classes in rented space at the Harcourt Butler Technological Institute in Kanpur City with a hundred students and a small faculty drawn primarily from local colleges. डायरेक्टर साहब जहाँ बैठते थे वहाँ सारी ऑफिसर्स थी उसी के अंदर एक स्टोर बना हुआ था और आपकी कुछ लैब केमिस्ट्री की फिजिक्स की मैकेनिकल भी कुछ लोग आ गए थे वहाँ पर का माहौल बड़ा अच्छा रहता था या वहाँ पर ये नहीं पता लगता था कौन डायरेक्टर है कौन प्रोफेसर है कौन कर्मचारी है सब लोग इतना एक दूसरे को चाहते थे इतना कोआर्डिनेशन अच्छा था कि वो लोग बड़ा प्यार देते थे हम लोग हालांकि हम लोग वहाँ के लोएस्ट कर्मचारी थे We had a hostel, was a textile institute, borrowed hostel, which could house about like 70 some people. There were some day scholars from Kanpur, they were coming as day scholars. We didn't even have a bus. Everybody huddled into a truck, uh, like a little blue truck, and we all like 50, 60 would pack, and we would be driven to HBTI campus. Ah. 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 Dr. Kilkar now turned his attention to finding young faculty who would be open to his ideas about teaching engineering. The early faculty tell many stories about their first encounter with Dr. Kilkar. I reached the HBTI campus. There was no department, there was nothing like the head of the department whom you go and report. So I just went and uh, knocked at the office of the director, you know, and uh, immediately I was ushered in. And when I walked into it, the first thing which I observed, most strikingly, that the director got up from his seat. You see. And when I walked, we shook hands, <clears throat> and he said, we have just given birth to our civil engineering department. Very easy for me to realize that here is a person who is going to employ me. He is the director of a, an institution that might become internationally famous. But that... I have no reason to be afraid of him. And it also gave me the impression that he wanted to learn from the young people like me rather than hand over knowledge, perception and information down. When we used to tell him that, look, we are very green kids. We have no experience, no teaching experience. And we are now asked to build up an institution. We sometimes feel very diffident. Then he said, look, 
ఐ కెన్ బింగ్ ప్రొఫెసర్స్ విత్ ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్ టైమ్ ఐ డా సార్ వాట్ ద డూ ఈజ్ ది బింగ్ ది సిస్టమ్ విత్ దమ్ ఐ డోంట్ వాంట్ దాట్ వాట్ విల్ యూ అండ్ పీపుల్ డూ యూ విల్ బ్రేక్ యూ విల్ బర్డ్ అండ్ అవుట్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ కమ్స్ యాషెస్ ఫ్రమ్ ది యాషెస్ ఎ ఫినిక్స్ విల్ కమ్ అవుట్ అండ్ దట్ విల్ బి ఐ ఎట్ In 1960, the government of Uttar Pradesh made available 1,200 acres of land for a new campus. The land was located 16 kilometers west of Kanpur near Kalyanpur, off the historical Grand Trunk Road. Most of the land had been acquired from Nankari village, a small farming community, no different from thousands of others across India's heartland. The government decision to set up the institute here brought to Nankari's doorstep a world they could barely imagine. But it also brought them face to face with an uncertain future. People were all aware that they didn't know what happened. Because they were all aware of the farmers. So, if they were all aware of the farmers, they would have to go away from their hands. They would have to go away from their hands. So, they would have to go away from their hands. So, they would have to go away from them. फिर धीरे धीरे चूँकि हम लोग यहाँ के लोकल रहने वाले थे तो यहाँ के जो गांव के लोग थे जिनसे जमीन ली जा रही थी उन लोगों से हमने व्यक्तिगत संपर्क करके धीरे धीरे उन लोगों को तैयार किया इसके लिए कि तुम्हारा पैसा भी कुछ बढ़ाया जाएगा जो कम मिला है ये भी बातचीत हुई थी बीच में कि तुम्हारे घर के जितनी जमीन जिस चीज़ की जा रही है उसके परिवार के एक सदस्य को नौकरी सरकारी नौकरी मिलेगी कुछ लोगों को ये तो अंदाज़ था कि इतनी बड़ी ज़मीन ली गई है तो कोई बहुत बड़ी चीज़ कोई बहुत महत्वपूर्ण चीज़ यहाँ बनाई जा रही है उसके बाद जब यहाँ पे अमेरिकन आए तो उनको लगा कि नहीं कोई बहुत ही ज़्यादा महत्वपूर्ण वो है क्योंकि यहाँ अमेरिकन भी काम कर रहे हैं तो उनको लगा कि कोई अजूबा बन रहा है campus was coming up in very early stages there was uh, uh, one hostel uh, where we were all staying we didn't even have the lecture blocks then and the classes were being held in a some kind of a temporary arrangement that's how it all began <laughs> 